recording then. So we just left off with the main character book, hiding in a side street and some kind of man walks by. Um, do you happen to know what this kanji is? This is walking, so yes. aruku. Perfect. Yep, aruku. So this word right here, toshi yori, this is used when you want to refer to someone who's older than you. And this is like the polite um ish way to do it. So you wouldn't say like furui hito, you'd be saying like toshi yori no hito. So like that. So this is kind of like the word elder, um, elderly. So that's like the polite way to refer to old people. So if I said, yeah, old people, that's kind of rude, right? Versus saying elderly. So toshi yori is the elderly. Yori. Is this yori the same yori as in compare to other things? It's more than? No. Um, I think the katakana, weirdly, the regular uh, kana. Uh, I believe this looks a lot like the yori for getting closer to, weirdly enough. But it should not. I don't think yori, like to, to from the comparison yori, I don't think that has kanji. Just tangent. It's not important. <laughs> okay. Can you do me a favor yeah. and read this for me? Otoshi yori wa aruku. Hi, what does this mean? A an elderly person walk. Yes, uh, an elderly person walks. So if you want to you say the word elderly, you have to add o. But if you want to use this as a descriptor, you don't need the o. Um, o is just helping to make this a little bit more polite. So, so someone who's elderly is walking will walk. Um. I our next word is rashi. So rashi is a thing that gets added to words to mean like seems like. So you kind of use this when you make like a hypothesis that and it's normally like some kind of conclusion you made. Um, it's be, Rashi tries to show up when you're like 100% certain, but you're just not saying 100% because in Japanese, it's kind of weird to say like this for sure is true. Versus, I'm pretty sure, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, do you happen to know what the te form of aruku is? Te form aruku ku is ita, ita, ku ita. Plus. So we get that aru. Aru ite. Aru ite. Aru ite. Hi. Nice. So the way how dashi works um, is that basically you have the noun and you just attach dashi to it. Um, it also can be attached to like stem form and stuff. Before purposes, we're just looking at it with a noun. So dorobo rashi means looks uh, is like something that you think is a thief, like probably is a thief. Dorobo rashi. Um, can you read this one for me? Mado seki rashi. What does that mean? Probably a magical stone. Yes. And how how would you say probably somebody old with toshiyori? Toshiyori yashi. Perfect. Rashi. Yep. You do me a favor and read the sentence for me. Toshiyori rashi otoko wa aruite iru. Perfect. What is this? Which mean? is a, an elderly man, a elderly seemingly, yes, a seemingly, a seemingly elderly, elderly man. man. <laughs> Walking. Exactly. Perfect. And I and while you're doing that, I was googling yori. Yeah, yoru yori comes from yoru, which just means to approach or get closer to. So kind of age to get close to is what it I is. I see. So this is the stem of the verb, and it's not the particle yori. Yes. Um. So our next verb is tayoru, which is an u verb. U verb. Tayoru means to rely on something, to rely on. Tayoru. What like part? Tanomu. Yes, like tanomu. Um, what particle do you think the thing that you're relying on would get? Relying on. Oh. Yes, perfect. Yep, so watashi wa mado saki wo tayoru, tayoru means I will rely on my magical stone. But so, I was kind of right. um, thinking about ni as well. Mm -hmm. Would it be okay? Um, there's certain contexts where you would use ni, but I think it insinuates something else or there's a slightly different form of tayoru. Uh, 
but definitely you would you knee I definitely feel like knee sometimes occurs with Tayodu, but I think that might be more like person specific, perhaps. Um, like tanomu perhaps might be the word tanomu. Depending on because I keep translating. I think I'm still stuck in the frame in the mind frame of translating ni as an on, mm -hmm. like on something or depending on someone. That's why Yeah. when I think of that's why you you ask me that question, I I think of ni and not of all. Hi. Um, so all can kind of have a with kind of meaning. So it could be like relying with the stone might be like how it's focusing on it rather than just fully relying on the stone might be how that's a little bit different. So this is more like a tool that you're relying on than something you're fully 100% relying on would be my guess. But I, I'd have to look at some example sentences to know for sure and not like fully see you're wrong. But I agree. I, I also was like, hmm, feels like me should be there. <laughs> but it's definitely um O in this context. Um, See, so knee is a lot more towards locations and purpose, yeah, or people. and not it location, purpose, or people. Yes. Okay. Uh, for example, if you're going Okay. to ask somebody a question, that would be um like sensei ni kiku means to ask someone a, a, to ask the teacher a question, and if you said like ongaku o kiku, that means to listen to music. Um, because Kiku can mean to ask or listen. So sensei ni kiku is to ask each your question. Ongaku o kiku is to listen to music. Um As I see here. So in this case, if I were to say sensei or kiku, it mean I'm listening uh, yes. to the thing called sensei. Yes. Whereas sensei ni iku mean I'm listening to what sensei is going to say. As... Basically, yeah. Uh, but that, that's how it gets the ask meaning. I'm listening to what he will say. It's a good way of thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, our next word is jue, which in this context is a staff or a cane. Like something you I... need to help you stand. Jue. Like from uh, How Moving Castle. So you got the sue, the lady. Oh yes, the lady. The I was old like, lady. I was like, who has the cane? <laughs> There's a cane in there. There's like, oh. uh, do you know what the mass form of Tayoru is? Tayoru, <laughs> mass. Okay, so it's Tayo, mimas. No, Tayo rimas. Perfect. Yep, rimas. Because Tayoru is an uber. Tayorimas. Perfect. Do you happen to remember what this kanji was? We saw it just a second ago. Hatsu. Uh, this is chu e. Chu e. You know what chu e means? A cane. A, a stick. Perfect. Cane or a stick. So the particle ni can help tell you the way you do a verb. We've mentioned this before, as I said, my favorite line, jumonde neko ni natta, which is with a spell I became a cat. You could also use this with the stem form of a verb to basically tell you the way you do a different verb, kind of like almost like the reason. For example, doko nusumi ni iku means to go to steal a magical stone. Do you know what yosu o ukagao meant? That was a word from last week. Yosu o ukaga ukagai ni matsu. It, it, um... To wait for the situation to unfold. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what it's saying. So you can do this, for example, let's say to walk, basically, wow is how I'm translating the knee in this context, depending on a staff. So tayoru is to depend on, to it is staff, and aruku is to walk. How do you think you would say this? Sueo o tayori ni iku. Yes, that is to go while relying on a staff. So I'm sure you know it's uh, in this context to walk would be aruku, to walk while relying on a staff. Aruku, um, oh, yes. Yes, aruku. So uh, while we're doing that, I did like a quick um, looking at tayoru, and I was right. Um, 
It would be ni tayoru if you're 100% relying on something like a person. So if you're going to rely on a person, that's going to use ni. But if you're using something as support, so you're still doing something yourself, but you're having something as like an extra support, that's where the o comes in. Wow, it's, that's so. That, yeah. Yes. So a really good example of a sentence that shows that would be um, uh, sorry, kane o watashi ni tayoru. Tayori, which is to rely on me for money, basically. So money is the tool, but you're not. But the thing you're fully relying on takes me. So that that's how that particle could be different. So over here, wow. the mazoseki doesn't have that ability to fully be depended on because it's an object, it's a tool. So that's why we're using all here. Hi. Thank you. Hi. And how's this guy pronounced again? Sweat. Perfect. Nice. So our next word right here, magaru, means bend. And it's not like to bend, it is to be bent. Magaru. So for example, you might use this with the word to describe a michi. What do you think would be the particle to go in here? Michi ga magaru. Yes. The, the path will bend. Perfect. Um, so koshi is a word that officially means like your lower back or waist. There's a lot of contexts where it'll mean your butt. Like you land on your koshi, for example, is it landing like this? It, it, it's, it's landing like that. <laughs> As like a random example. So it's basically like this area being your lower waist and butt area basically is koshi. Um, in the context that we're going to see it in, it is basically the lower back, I guess they're referring to. I, but I, I just say, in case you've heard koshi, you're like, wait, isn't that butt? Uh, it is. It can mean butt in certain contexts. Can I clarify on the I, tangent point? The ashi, the foot or the leg, is it? it's also ambiguous in that yes. sense, right? It could be the yes. foot. It could be the leg. We don't yes. know which. Yes, it could be first. Same actually with the word yubi. So you might know yubi means fingers, but yubi can also refer to toes. So that I... refers to both of those. So yeah, same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. So last time we saw this phrase, can you read it for me? Senaka o mawaru is to to slouch. Hi. To slouch, and I. I think I have the wrong word here. It's marumeru, not mawaru. <laughs> Which it, it is to slouch. Marumeru. Uh, so. <laughs> marumeru. Oh, mawaru. Mawaru is to go around. To go it is to go around. Uh, <laughs> maru, maru, maru. <laughs> Su super similar maru. words. <laughs> like, hi. So yeah, that is to slouch. So koshi ga um, magaru is pretty similar to that. But this is like to have a permanent slouch in your spine. So like old people, you know, and at least in anime and stuff, when you draw them, they're like, you know, all slouched like this. They they can't like straighten their back. This is their default, right? So mm. if your default is kind of slouch, that's koshi ga magaru. If you're slouching, so you can, you know, your default would be standing straight, then to slouch is senako marumeru. So this is to do it's the slouching. It's interesting here. Hi. That the subject, or it's interesting here that it goes from um, senaka, and then for the permanent slouch, it's koshi. Hi. Uh, it kind of has it's to do with the back the, that round. I think it has to do with like the idea in Japan that the area that you're bending from is down here, so that's that's like the bending point when your back gets some when you're old with your slouch. Versus if you're like normal and you're slouching, you're normally kind of bounding more like your whole back, kind of. So I, th I think that's where that um idea is coming from. So it, like, oh, it makes sense lower, if you look. Yeah. The lower back this is, is lower bending, back. not the butt, but the yes. lower back. Versus senaka, which is just all back. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. Awesome. Now you get to go read the line from our book. Koshi yori rashi 
こしがまがり。つえをたよりにあるいている。Which means the、uh, seemingly elderly,、uh, seemingly elderly period,、um, the permanent bend lower back, and、yep. uh, relying on tayori is to rely on, right? Yep. Relying on the cane to walk. Perfect. Relying, walking, relying on the cane. Perfect. Yep. Walking while relying on the cane. So, our next word, kiru, means to put on clothes. This is the generic putting on clothes.、Um, in Japanese, they actually have a lot of different ways to mention how you put on clothes with different verbs. But kiru is like the generic one. So, if you can't remember, you can kind of use kiru and they can kind of guess what you're saying.、Um, But there, there are like very specific things depending on if you're putting on a cloak or your pants or your glasses or something like that. But、right. kiru is like generic. I'm starting to realize isn't there a lot of verb that c o m e with the sound kiru?、Like, mm -hmm, there is. So, there's a kiru bunch, right? It can also be、um, this one, which is the cut. So, this is another example. This would be kite in t e f o r m、um, I think it is. Right, yeah, yeah. It, it is versus this kiru. Um, is、Which、to is wear、like、to write or something.、Yeah. Uh, it's another one to listen. Um, not really listen, that's that's some kiku. Kiku is to listen, okay. Um, and kuru is to come. Kuru, though, the te form of kuru is kite, which is just、yeah. like the te form of to wear clothes. Kite. <laughs> So that's, that's one of those、um, homophones right there.、Uh, in、yes. general, you don't see this one that often. Like putting on clothes, not that often. Normally, you're either you will put on clothes or your clothes are already on, right? There, there's only a. So, kiteiru would be the act of putting on the clothes. So, you're not wearing the clothes yet. It's the changing r o u t i n e So, you're not going to see But if, it very often. If the、uh, listening to verb the, is. Kiku. So in the te form, it would be kite. Yes, kite. The longer sound. Exactly. So in the te form, potentially these four would sound roughly the same. Yep, for us English speakers. Yep. Kite, kite and kite. Super similar. There's possible there could be、um, a pitch accent, accent difference, which as a non native speaker, I cannot identify.、Uh... Right. <laughs> Okay, do you remember how this is pronounced? Kiru. Perfect. Kiru.、Um, what particle do you think we'd go right here with the word robu? This is a robe. Robu. Robu o kiru. Perfect. Yep. Oh, because you're making a decision to wear clothes. Got some intent there.、Um, so, agol means chin. Super common word in Japanese. Agol. Koko. Um, do you know what the te、uh, form of kiru is? It's kite. No, kite. Is, yeah, kite.、Hi. So our next word is hige. Hige can mean whiskers, like on a cat, or you could refer to whiskers as in the facial hair on a man's face, or both、um, hige. So that could、That's、be a including... mustache. What about the beer? Would that have a different word? No, that's still hige. Um, you, we, we'll learn a specific word that, um, in a second that combines those two together. It says agohige. An agohige is specifically the facial hair that is on the chin. So a goatee is quite likely if they say the word agohige, but theoretically it could be a beard in general. But a goatee is more likely to be being referred to <laughs> with that. Hi. And ago is chin. The chin. Hi. Hi. Um, ago, the kanji does look similar to atama, atama, which means head. The, this part is the same, which is kind of nice. And hige also looks a lot like kami, which means hair. Right here is kami. They got the same top part, it looks like. Yeah. Hi. Ago, hige. Hige. Um, in our book, 
they write this is not commonly written as katakana i just had the katakana here um so normally you'll see agohige just in hiragana hey. beard um what do you think agohige ga aru otoko means the man with the man with a beard perfect a man with a beard so this is a random thing that can occur in japanese if we have ga and it's marking the subject of a relative clause. So this is a relative clause describing otoko. You can replace the ska with no. And the sentence means the exact same thing. So rather than saying agohige ga aru otoko, you can say agohige no aru otoko. Um, it doesn't change the meaning. The reason why you'd have no here is so that it's easier to understand what you're saying. Um, from, from my experience, I will see People, um, I'll see both. So I'll see the relative clause having ga, and I'll see relative clause having ga replaced with no. From my understanding, this is optional. But we're going to see I, it in the next sentence of ga being replaced by no. Um, I, so our next word is jisan. Probably something you've seen heard a lot in anime. Do you happen to know what this means? Jisan, like a uh, generic old person. Yes, a generic old person. Perfect. Hi. Now you get to go read our phrase from the book. Right, so, rope o kita. Ago hige no aru jisan da. The old man with the beer put on his robe. Mm, past tense. So it just means he's wearing a robe. So this right here is oh, one of those wear. examples of how um, what a verb means in Japanese doesn't necessarily fully like match um, English with our tensing. So that's why I said you're not going to see um, kiteiru very awesome, which for us you might assume is wearing, but this actually is the act of putting on clothes. So this is the one minute or so it takes for you to put on the jacket and the sweater and like as you're dressing yourself. So this is actually dressing oneself not um wearing so wearing is the past tense of that to be kita you already did the dressing up so that, that's one of those I... like huh tensing doesn't match so he's just wearing this uh but literally past tenses he put on a coat at some point in the day and is now wearing it <laughs> okay that makes sense okay do you happen to know this kanji um nani Yep, nani, perfect. What? Um, so our next word is tsubuyaku. This word means to mutter. It looks so much that word nani looks so much like the other one. Yeah, to that's the on... mm, no. Nan Nagakao Tai something cow. I, I, I thought you were gonna say oh naji. <laughs> Kanji. The to to rely on the the verb we we learned last lesson. Gosh, what was that? It was not rely on. What was it last time? Uh, to depend <laughs> on the magical stone or something. No, like that. that that no, it had to be something else. Let me go like now. It's bugging me. What could it be? <laughs> ah. Gotta go fast. Suddenly, Ooh. the kanji looks so much the same. Like. I have to pause there. No, there there was a very similar kanji. I remember us having a conversation about it, but I know it was not depending on because there, there, uh, there. Ukagao, yes. uh, yo, ukagao. Yeah, that is to implore. To implore, to wait for the situation or something. To yes, to wait and see is yosu o ukagao. Yeah, it, it means so like that to kanji implore there. On it's only different from nani with a tiny little stroke on top. I think. It's also, yeah, it's it's very similar to Nani, and now I'm lost. Yeah, super duper similar. Uh, but it's it, also similar to Onaji. Right, and here we are. Right. Slide sixty, yes. Oof, did it? Yeah. So yeah, it is Sorry quite similar. Utago. Right. So only that small little um extended horizontal stroke if the horizontal stroke is it completely matched up with the vertical stroke then it's the other character yeah 
That means like that guy. Uh, do you remember what Tsubayaku meant? Tsubayaku. To very swiftly or something like that. Mm. Very Actually, quickly. it means to mutter. So like... Tsubayaku. Tsubayaku. Like grumbly noises. So it does have a nice kuchi kanji. But sadly in this book, there's no kanji for Tsubayaku. So just going to say tu yaku whenever people are muttering which they mutter a lot in this book they always go mur, 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 mur. In, in lesson one Hi. we learned the word my finger swiftly yes my finger swiftly yeah. <laughs> you're right that is super similar subayaku subayaku and subayaku so super versus, Wait, versus su. so suba su, su. Su, su, subuyaku, subayaku. Hi. Weirdly similar. Subuyaku. As an English speaker, okay, we're so, like. Subu, subuyaku, to mutter. Yep. Hi. Um, so this right here is an adverb that is one of the few ones that do not get ku ni or to with it. Can you read it for me? Nani yara. Perfect. Nani yara. Um, nani yara means something or the other. <laughs> something or the other. So he uses this to modify something else, like some. They're like he's saying something. I don't know what. Kind of like a be who know who knows what they're saying. Basically, is nani yara, some kind of thing. Some uh, kind of a thing. So nani this yara. is an example of a sentence that would use nani yara. Which can you read it for me? Ji san wa nani yara tsubuyasu. Tsubuyaku. What does this mean? He mumbling something of the old man yes. mumbling about. Yeah. Old man's mumbling something. So now we have an adverb that's butsu butsu. Any guesses what we need to add to it? Butsu butsu to. Yep, butsu butsu to. This is like the muttering sound effect. So, <laughs> well, in English, it's more like mer, 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 like blah, 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 I think. I was thinking like beat up. Butsu, butsu. <laughs> butsu, butsu. No, that'd be something else, I think. Butsu, butsu might have multiple meanings, though. A lot of onomatopoeias can be used in um, multiple occasion, but butsu, butsu, I think it's just kind of you spitting like in your mouth. Yeah, it looks like it cannot I... mean. Apparently, it can mean cut into small pieces, though. So, as you can see, they, there is a wide range to what it means. But yeah, I think I... it's more kind of like. <laughs> butsu, butsu. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, do you know what the must form of tsubuyaku is? Tsubuyaku. Tsubuyakimasu. Perfect. Tsubuyakimasu. Hi. Do you happen to recognize this kanji? So we've seen this word in an earlier page, but I don't, but we didn't have to learn the kanji back then. That was not today, but last time. Hi. It was the heel. Uh, 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 uh. A hill or a, a a mound, right? Yes, it is a hill. So this is saka. 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 Saka is hill. Um, our next word is noboru. Any guesses what noboru might mean? Noboru to climb. Yes, to climb. Noboru has lots of different possible kanjis. Um, I just selected this one because I think it's the easiest kanji because it has ue, which is up. So you know you're climbing up. <laughs> But there, there's other ones that could potentially be depending on what an author wants to insinuate. For example, noboru. That looks like this. This is specifically the sun climbing up. I see. In the sky. So, uh, but theoretically, all the verbs are the same. They're just using different kanji for aesthetics. Um, anyway, noboru is an u verb. So, not a do. It ends with u r plus u. Noboru. Okay. So if you're climbing a mountain, what do you think we're going to put as the particle? I mean, a hill. Saka o noboru. Hi. Perfect. Nice. So right now is our halfway point. So I'll stop. Our meeting, and I'll see you in two seconds. Hi.